What we're looking at here is a small L-shaped jig for my drill press. I've drawn it in VCAR Pro and I'm now just transferring it to a compact flash card. Once that's done, I'll take it out to the workshop and plug it into my CNC router. My CNC router uses Turbo CNC. It's a DOS based program and it's very quick to start. From turn on to ready to work is only a, a few seconds. Now loading up the part file and now setting the zero point for the cutter. The block is set to go off at 50 millimeters above the uh, surface it's sitting on. So I'm entering 32 millimeters here because I am zeroing off the surface of the table and my material is 18 millimeters thick. Therefore I'm 18 millimeter, uh, 32 millimeters above the surface of the material. Now just zeroing X and Y and attaching, attaching Kent's dust shoe. Here we are starting the cut. We're cutting here uh, three millimeters deep at 200 inches a minute. And it's cutting very nicely indeed. I've recently upgraded the bearings in the router, and the cut quality has actually improved quite a bit. You'll notice that the dust shoe does not collect all of the dust. Some of the larger material is left over and is just left sitting on the table, but that's okay. The main thing I, I want from the dust shoe is to pick up the fine dust. The first part of the cut there was a, uh, an L-shaped slot. It cuts right through the um, material down to the table surface. Because I zeroed off the table top, it will only just brush the table, it won't cut into it. The profile cut I'm doing here is only cutting down to 17.5mm, so at least half a millimetre of material left over, which will uh, hold the part in place. The reason I do that instead of putting holding tabs is I get a much, much smoother cut. And it's easy to release when I'm finished. The half millimetre of material that's left over also holds better than uh, holding pads. Well now the cut is finished, just releasing it from the table. As you can see there, the slot is cut all the way through, just the merest paper thin piece left on there. And now with a simple knife, it's just a matter of cutting off that half millimetre of MDF that was left holding it. We can easily deal with that once we've got the part free. Now I'm just going to run a, uh, a beveled edge around it using a Nine, uh, 45 degree cutter. This not only clears all the rubbish away from the edge, but it also puts the bevel on at the same time. And we have the completed jig in place on the drill press.